What is good, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy Foxy. Welcome back to the Fox's Den. Getting into another reaction. Good old Mashal. Season 2, Episode 8. Yo, last episode was fucking amazing, bro. We got that nice-ass fight between Mash and Margaret. Margaret really showing his true capabilities and being able to travel at the speed of sound once he truly released all of his full magic power, which also allowed him to create and do other spells, too, that he had been hiding in his deck. Uh, one of them being his second spell. But the first one that he showed off was just him basically being able to move at the speed of sound, which at first was very, very crazy and challenging for Mash because it's like, okay, yeah, Mash is fast as fuck and strong, of course, because of his physical strength and whatnot. That's what he relies on because he doesn't have magic. But speed of sound fast with just his strength and physical prowess? I don't think so, buddy. But sure enough, he was able to figure out a way to get, you know, get past that hurdle and was able to start kind of predicting or making him have to choose which direction which to go instead of you know like limiting his scope basically of where to go towards the end to be able to finally catch him uh which was ultimately how he stopped the second spell is like he had to catch him get his wand away from him and he broke it and boom that's pretty much said and done there and he gave up he's like you know what i, I you know i, I recede i'm good you know, uh, I mean, he broke his wand. I, I'm assuming since his wand is broken, then he can't perform anything. So I'm, I'm guessing that he wasn't able to move at the speed of sound anymore after that either. Unless he just truly felt like he's shown all his cards and there's no point in fighting anymore. And he's just like, all right, fuck it, I'm done. And gave up. So that's pretty much what we got with the fight between Mash and Margaret. And it looked fucking amazing. The animation was great. And then as we saw at the beginning of the last episode, and then obviously towards the end, Innocent Zero has shown the fuck up. They're invading this exam for Divine Visionary. Very giving me, you know, it's giving me a lot of tuning exam vibes, as I mentioned last episode's discussion, just in all of the connections I've been making in these, you know, in the two shows. And it's not like Naruto and Mashal are super related or anything. Like, they're completely two different worlds in terms of how the characters work and, you know, the power system, all that kind of stuff. But in terms of just some of the things that I was seeing, I was like, damn, like, that's making me think of that. You know what I'm saying? And so that's exactly what I saw last episode. Like, some of the moves that Mash did, like the Rock Lee, the Kakashi, you know, stuff like that. And then obviously the ultimate, you know, them coming to invade during an exam that's exactly like you know Orochimaru invading during the tuning exam so I made that connection that was pretty cool and apparently Big Dog you know the one that oversees Innocent Zero or is the head honcho whatever you want to call him we haven't even got to see his actual face yet I don't think apparently this guy is claiming to be Mash's father so it's like all right what the fuck are you doing in Innocent Zero have you always been a part of this organization? Why did you leave Mash when he was a kid? Why did you abandon him? Why do you want him now? You know what I'm saying? And apparently it's going to complete him if he absorbs him or something like that or incorporates Mash into himself. That's something along the lines of what he said. I don't know what exactly it is. I guess we're going to figure it out, figure that out this episode. But I also mentioned, if I had to guess, Mash is going to be involved in this fight and going to continue to prove himself to the current Divine Visionaries, especially, especially Glass as Fuck, since Glass as Fuck is the one that, like, doubts him the most and wants him to fail the most. So, I'm expecting Mash to actually be able to do something within this fight, or maybe it's really one-sided and it doesn't go the way I think at all. I don't know yet, but Wahlberg is stepping up to, you know, defend MASH, and I'm sure some of the Divine Visionaries are not stuck in the time loop or whatever, the fr frozen time, as uh, Wahlberg is. You know, Wahlberg seems to be the only one right now, but there's no way that he's the only one that can, like, negate that. I I'm sure that the other there's other Divine Visionaries, or most of the Divine Visionaries are able to get out of it and help out in this fight. And then maybe even mash at some point, or maybe somebody, or maybe somebody else starts dispelling the frozen time magic, and everybody can escape and get the fuck out. I don't know. That's where we're at. Let's get in the episode. Let's get in the reaction. If you guys enjoy it, please like down below, comment, subscribe if you're new, hit that notification bell so you know the next one's dropping. Let's get into it. Mashal episode eight, season two. It's been so long, my son. <laughs> I would never obtain you. Bro, all you had to do was keep him. And you would have had, had him attain, obtained the whole time. Unless there's some other third party that helped, like, took Mash away from this person. That could be a possibility, but I don't know. 
We about to see Wahlberg in action, bro. Oh, that's gonna be fucking interesting if he actually put you know puts up a fight. Let's get it. Are we gonna dispel this shit or what's good? Okay, we just saw glasses guy, divine visionary, uh, still frozen. And it seems he can choose because his allies are not frozen in time. All right, he's ready to put on his life on the line, so he's gonna get busy. You're getting a little too ahead of yourself, I think, buddy. Oh! <laughs> you better watch yourself, buddy. Oh! Yo, Wahlberg ain't want to be messed with. I knew that. Come on. Okay, we already see two marks on his face. If he's the head of Innocent Zero, I would have to assume he might be a genuine triple liner. He is mine. Oh, come on, show me something. Triple I, baby. Oh, shit. He ain't fucking around. He ain't fucking around. Come on. Bro, he looks so badass. Look, I knew it. Yep, he has a triple line too. Wait. That was two lines that just came down his face. How many fucking lines has he got on his face? Uranus. Uranus. <laughs> What's his wand? Kronos. No, that makes sense since he froze time. Okay. What the fuck? Come on, there's gotta be some divine visionaries that can get out of this and help out a little bit. I mean, I know. Okay, there we go. He dispelled Mash. Okay, he dispelled Margaret. All right, him. Everybody. All right, he dispelled everybody. Or no, the most important people. I bet. Say less. Mash like I bet I got you. Don't no no worries. Let's get to work, baby. Come on. All our heavy hitters. Good eye, good eye. Man. I mean, uh, fucking dot. Better see Caldo in action. Mm. Oh my goodness. Yo, that blade is so badass. Okay, I had a feeling, yeah, he's good. The demons, really? Okay. Orter. That's his name. I gotta remember that. Orter. From Mash and Margaret fighting against each other to now working together. Ooh! Damn! That was cold. That was cold. I'm not gonna lie. Yo. Is he moving them away? So they can actually go all out? That's exactly what they're doing! Oh, shit! Yo, nah, I have a feeling we're about to see some wild shit like we've never seen before in this show. Damn right. Some Goku Vegeta shit type shit. You know what I'm saying? Come on! Can't get the civilians and the rest of the students in the mix. We're too powerful for that. We're too powerful. What the fuck? Oh, is he about to try and take out everybody in the Coliseum? I think that's exactly what he's trying to do. 
Yep. That motherfucker, that's a different type of demon right there. Hmm, okay. Interesting, okay. <laughs> Time to head out. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You just gonna punch that shit the fuck down? Oh, he's just leveling it slowly but surely. That is hilarious. <laughs> Relating it to another childhood game. What's up? 1v1. What's good? Alright, say less. I'm about to screw you. To, I'm about to punch you in the fucking ground, dog. He doesn't even remember where you saw him from. That's how insignificant you are, buddy. He don't even remember where you've met you from. Exactly. He's trying so hard to remember to not be rude. <laughs> he gave up. Is that going to piss you off? Okay, I guess we'll find out in a few minutes. <laughs> bro, that's obviously a trap. Why would there... Yeah, I was about to say, bro. Did he just turn Barrett into a baby? What in the fuck is this creepy ass babysitter? Yo, get this man's away from me. Amazing. <laughs> Yo, Bear, I don't think it's working, dude. <laughs> it's so drolly. Babies! <laughs> That's all he says to do the fucking spell. You have more demons to worry about, too. <laughs> Don't tell me you actually got Lance to fuck, bro. This is so trolly. <laughs> This is so fucking stupid. <laughs> Yo, who's gonna take out this babysitter, bro? Not even a tenth? Goddamn. Yeah, you're a bitch. One of the divine visionaries has gotta take this fuck out. There's nobody else here besides them and Wahlberg. Oh, he was able to use. Cause he has, cause he's a second liner. Oh, so Lance is Lance has always been like that. I. Yeah, exactly. They, this this fucking babysitter was a bitch. <laughs> Alright, yes, back to this. Oh, wait. This is Ro. So Ro's gonna come across Wahlberg and them? Or er, Wahlberg and Innocent Zero? Fuck. Come on, send me back to that Wahlberg seat fight, bro. They're probably gonna go in. 
matching that of God. Ain't no fucking way, bro. He can change his face, okay. So this these two are the ones that were the students of this person Adam who's apparently like a literal god to defeat you oh he's out for blood all right come on start this fight bruh like literally a clock what is he doing is he summoning something a forbidden spell that's a casket bro that's literally a coffin is he summoning somebody from the dead Bro, if he's summoning somebody from the dead, then this is straight up- This is literally some tuning exam shit, bro. This end is a zero fuck, is literally Orochimaru. Is he gonna end here? I was about to say, no way. He's just imagining him as a cream puff? Alright, keep talking that shit, bro. I'm about to smack you the fuck up. Go ahead, try it! Try it! Why is your face looking so shocked? <laughs> Let's go! It ain't working, buddy! He coming straight to you to smack you in the ground, I'm telling you! Come on, Nash! Smack that motherfucker! Oh, let's go! You felt that shit! Yeah, yeah I've already seen that shit, bro. Yeah, that's right, stupid bitch. You didn't expect that? Oh, man, it is right there. Damn. Damn. Alrighty guys, what another amazing episode of Mashal. That was so fucking gas. And I just realized that I forgot to turn down my noise gate and whatnot a little bit on my mic. Unfortunately, that is my bad. So this, if, you're, if, you, if you've gotten this far into the video, then the reaction, you know, the episode uh, audio might have sounded a little bit more muffled than usual. That's because I forgot to change the settings before I started watching. So that's unfortunate, but uh, it should be still decent. So it's all good, it's whatever. I'll make sure to uh, fucking tune that in for the next couple episodes of uh, uh, stuff that I watch. I usually remember, but sometimes, I mean, I just got so hype in the pre-episode discussion talking about it that I just completely forgot to even do it. So, oh well, but what an amazing episode. That was so fucking gas. Wahlberg is getting into the action. Innocent Zero is showing what he's capable of. Sure enough, both of them are genuine triple line users because you see their triple line come out onto their face or like grow onto their face like whenever they truly want to get serious and they're both getting serious and apparently they already know each other these two are apparently were old friends or students of this one person named adam who's apparently like an actual god and that's how strong he was and that's we've getting we're getting this information from Ro as he's heading to easton to try and help out or whatever got that information from him seeing Wahlberg and Instant Zero move away they're going they're literally fighting in the fucking sky and they're like okay let's get out Wahlberg I think was the one that teleported them away 
to be able to get away from you know the regular students and everybody was in the coliseum because if they go all out there then it's probably going to be there's probably going to be casualties within the space that they're fighting so they're like he, obviously Wahlberg's like all right let's move gave me some type of vibes like goku and vegeta whenever they'd fight or goku fighting anybody powerful honestly if he's around his friends like yo follow me and i'll whoop your ass okay we're not gonna do it here because obviously we're too fucking strong for all these motherfuckers i'm not gonna allow, allow them allow them to get caught up in it so that was already hyping me up seeing Wahlberg take that initiative and move them you know him and innocent zero elsewhere to be able to fight full force we haven't gotten like the actual start of the fight you know what i'm saying I, I was hoping we were gonna get that but it's all good and sure enough he dispels the frozen time magic on certain people that he wants to help out in this endeavor so he uh unfroze mash lance barrett and then two divine visionaries that were in the coliseum which was caldo and orter those are the ones that he unfroze to basically be able to take care of these demons that just spawned out of nowhere from innocent zero from the ground and also take care of who, whoever you know other allies that innocent zero has that brought with him like that one guy that felt the bloodlust or like thirst from Wahlberg. He, he, like he thought he was talking big at first, like, oh, I can't wait to get my hands on him. And then he all of a sudden he felt it's almost like he imagined an axe cutting him in half. And he was like, what the fuck was that? That was bloodlust. And then that's right then and there where he realized, OK, maybe I'm getting a little too ahead of myself. I can't be taking on Wahlberg. You know what I'm saying? Like, calm the fuck down, buddy. So they got those allies that are still in the Coliseum, the demons, and that's where he unfroze all those people, as we mentioned, to help out, take care of those demons and, and protect the other students. Where Wahlberg is going to focus on Innocent Zero, the, the head of him, Innocent Zero, which is his old time friend, apparently, his, you know, basically his equal, uh, as we are alerting. And it seems that this guy has taken like, you know, a dark path in life where he doesn't really care about abandoning humanity because that's what Wahlberg mentioned. Have you completely abandoned your humanity? Because he at one point he had no face. It was just completely bald, no eyes, nose, mouth, nothing. It gave me all for one vibes there. Uh, but then he can, I guess he can literally change his face because we see it change right in front of us and shows us the face that Wahlberg is used to seeing where I guess that's his original face, but who knows who else he can replicate if he can just change his face whenever he wants. So that's fucking wild. And then eventually he ends up starting up a spell that according to Wahlberg seems like it's a forbidden spell. And there's a coffin behind him, bro. A coffin locked up in chains. That's telling me that he might be bringing back somebody from the fucking dead. And if it's bringing back somebody from the fucking dead, it's probably somebody insane in like ma in like national history or this universe's history like maybe it's adam maybe it's their teacher and if that's the case we were just getting information from ro that he was basically like a god and his dark magic was very hard to handle so if if the innocent zero if the head of innocent zero has control of him and, and that's who he's bringing out on top of what he's already capable of with his magic too this ain't looking good and there's one of two goals or there's two goals that he's trying to accomplish take back mash and the other one he wants to make sure Wahlberg is dead so he's out for blood he's trying to kill Wahlberg. so this fight is probably gonna be fucking insane and i i, I really hope we actually get into the meats of it next episode that's what i'm expecting at least and pretty much from the rest of the episode i mean we saw lance and barrick turn into a baby from this one babysitter fuck that's his magic he turns people into babies and then you know expects them to be completely weak and can't do anything rightfully so that was barrett's case he couldn't perform any of his spells but lance on the other hand even as a baby he was strong as fuck dude you know what i'm saying so he took out the babysitter dude got them back to normal all right now they can continue fighting the demons and, and protecting the students in the coliseum and then mash he was focused on thorn dude which i can't remember his name right now but the blonde guy who made this tower and you know is using as many thorns as possible to take out mash and mash just like i thought running through his fucking mat literally running on top of his magic gets all the way to him smacks the fuck out of him and then it's just like oh yeah now i remember you but i've already seen this magic once you think it's gonna work a second time please like he he's not even interested he's not even intrigued like you have to do something way better than that if you're actually gonna take me down even though i don't have magic and blonde fuck is over there like he just got hit he's like oh like he's shocked or some shit dude oh man i i don't know if he's gonna 
I would expect him to put up a little bit more of a fight, but honestly, I wouldn't be surprised either if he just gets his shit rocked next episode, like, pretty quickly, you know, with the confidence that MASH is coming at him with. So, that's pretty much where we're at. Another amazing episode of Mashal. Can't complain. If you guys enjoyed the reaction, please leave a like down below. Comment, subscribe if you're new, and hit that notification bell so you know the next one's dropping. I'll see you on the next one. Y'all be good. Deuces.